Today I need to mount this device onto uh, an electrical project that I'm making and this is called a TO3 package, this configuration with uh, this style. This happens to be a 12 volt voltage regulator but it could be a transistor because they also come in the same package and you can see it has three connections, one here, one here and the case. The case is also a connection and that's important, we'll talk about that in a little bit. This is my project and you can see that the case is aluminum and I want to use that as a heat sink. This doesn't, it's not going to uh, let off a lot of heat so I don't have to worry too much about it. So what we need to do to mount it on there is obviously we need the holes for the uh, for the mounts right there you can see and then we need holes for the connections for the two legs coming out of there. Now I've already drilled these. It looks like that. You can see these, this pattern right here and what will happen is this will go on here like that and then we'll put some special mounting hardware on here and that's also important how that's put on there. We'll go over that in detail. But there's one other trick here. As I said the case is one of the connections so if I mount this directly to this piece of aluminum the aluminum becomes part of the circuit and I don't want that. So what we need to do is we need to add another component and let me show you that these two things are insulators. Now this is a typical one. This is a piece of mica and as you can see it has been cut and drilled to fit this device down here. So that would go in here. You can see the legs will go in there and the mounting holes line up. And this will allow heat to pass through but uh, it will not allow electricity to pass through. Uh, of course I'll need to add heat sink compound on all these surfaces to help the, the thermal transfer. But today I'm not going to use this mica one. I'm going to use a one I took out of a piece of military hardware and these are supposed to be really good. It's actually ceramic as you can see. It's very thick and it passes heat very well which kind of surprises me but it will not pass electricity. So they, they use these in high voltage applications. But I've got a whole horde of them from something I tore apart. So I want to try that. And what happens is it goes through like that. And then we will mount that. Like this. And the heat will pass through to the aluminum and the electricity will not. So therefore this will have, this will be part of the circuit but the case will not. Let's look on the inside quickly. There, you can see it from the inside. You can see the two legs in there. Okay, so now let's go over the mounting hardware because that's very important. These little screws that go in here, they have some special pieces and they need to go in in the right order and the right way or it will not work. These are the components we're going to assemble. This is the TO3 package, the insulator, and then this is one side of the mounting hardware that will go through one of these holes. Let's do a close-up on that so you can see uh, the correct sequencing on, on assembling these components right here. Here is a close-up. You can see the screw on this side, so there's a screw, there's a small metal washer and it will come in contact with the case of the TO3 and then it passes through here. This next component is probably the most important. It's a plastic nylon insulator. This is that important nylon piece I was telling you about and you can see the shape of it and what it's going to do is it's going to go in there. This part is going to help ensure that the screw does not touch the heat sink and it will insulate the screw from the heat sink and it'll keep the heat sink out of the circuit. And then there's another uh, metallic washer and then a solder tab. Note on the solder tab, you want to do the soldering before you assemble this so that, you know, that this doesn't, uh, if this gets hot, this can melt. This nylon piece can melt, so that's not good. But okay. Uh, and then, of course, the nut to tighten it all up. And what this nylon spacer is going to do is it's going to assure that this screw does not come in contact with the case. So let me put this inside of a heat sink and I will show you what I mean. So there it is in place. And you can see it's, this part goes into that hole 
and holds the screw away from the sides. So it's very important it's oriented in this direction. And from here we can see all of it. We can see up here we see the head of the screw, the steel washer, there's the TO3 case, the insulator, this is the heat sink, in our case it's going to be that uh, aluminum box I'm encasing this in. There is the nylon insulator and then you have to make sure that that's set down inside the hole. Then there's the steel washer above that, then there is the solder tab, you can see the solder tab there, finalized with a nut and that's pretty much it. Now this is one side, the other side won't have a solder tab, it'll just have a lock washer here instead. Okay, but this sequencing is extremely important. What we need to do now is we need to do what we did with this and we need to transfer it over to here. So uh, the one thing I did not show you on this piece is the heat sink compound and what's going to happen is I will put in the heat sink compound, put in that pink insulator, put heat sink compound on top of that, apply the TO3 device, put in the hardware that we just looked at on both ends of course and that will be mounted. As you can see I've applied the heat sink. It's this stuff. This is made by Dow Corning um, and what I will do is I will apply this carefully. Messy messy stuff. Let's see. Then I will apply heat sink compound to the pink thing here. And mine is set too long, it's starting to separate, but still should be okay. I will apply the TO3 like this. Put in my screws like this. Now I've already got these washers on here. Sometimes the the kits will come with a screw that's got a really large head so you won't need this extra washer. It'll just be the screw right down through here. Now this next part I gotta flip this over and put the stuff on the back side. I won't be able to do it on camera which is why we went through that with the uh, with the other heat sink uh, so that you can see it uh, like with this thing. Um, and then once I get that on there and somewhat installed we will go back and take a look at it. Let's take a look inside. We can see that, first of all, that our contacts are fairly well centered inside those holes. That's very important. It also indicates that we probably have this the end hardware in position correctly. Um, so yeah, those that's important. And the other thing is to make sure that these nylon uh, insulators are down in position. These are black. They also come in white. Uh, make sure those are in position. They appear to be from here. Let's take a look from the other end and make sure that's the case. Yeah, as I think you can see, those are in there right. The small part of the insulator is down inside the hole and the whiter part of the insulator is up there on top. And we have our metal washer, our lock washer, and our nut. And then on this side, metal washer, uh, this is a locking solder tab, and then the nut. Okay, so it looks pretty good from there. A construction note, when you first put these in and you put the nuts on the other side and you have the insulating washers and all that in position, as you tighten it down, as it just barely gets tight, and I mean just barely gets tight, wiggle this around and on the other side move the, those insulators around and make sure they're getting in the hole. If you tighten this too quickly and those insulators are cockeyed or something or they're not sitting in the hole, you will deform them badly and yeah, that, that, that can be a problem. So just a little bit at a time. Make sure the nylon uh, insulators are in place and then continue tightening. Our goal today was to mount a TO3 device, whether that's a transistor or in this case a 12 volt voltage regulator, onto our heat sink, thermally connecting them but keeping them electrically isolated. So the final check on that is to use our ohmmeter. And there's our TO3 case, there's our project case, and nothing. The other thing we need to make sure is we need to make sure these screws, because this is where our solder tab is connected, the screw is electrically connected to the TO3, and yes. So, there we have it. 
Okay, well, I hope you found that useful and interesting in your home DIY electronics projects.